Now, there were actually uh, two systems that apparently didn't work uh, upon that landing, because what was supposed to happen, and we're going back to our model uh, of the Comet uh, 67P and our little model of the Philae lander that came down. So what happened was that the uh, lander was coming down very, very slowly um, towards the comet. It moves very slowly, and that's one of the reasons why they wanted these harpoons to deploy, because essentially there's so little gravity on this comet that the, uh, the, the lander has to attach itself to the surface. That in itself is difficult enough because they don't really know what the surface is like. Is it very dusty? Is it very icy? Is there even any sort of matter there? that these harpoons could attach themselves to. Now, apparently the harpoons didn't, um, didn't deploy immediately. And the other thing that this lander has, it has a booster on the top. It's a, it's a, a gas booster that was supposed to press the lander against the, against the comet surface. That didn't work either. And so um, they believe that the lander uh, hit the comet surface, might have bounced several times. And a bounce like that can take very, very long because, again, there's no gravity, so it bounces up for a very long time. They think a bounce could take up to an hour, and then they believe at some point it came to a rest on the comet surface. They don't know whether it's attached at this point. They're trying to find out. I spoke to several scientists. There was one who said uh, he believes that the harpoons might have deployed afterward, but certainly there is no indication at this point that they tried to manually uh, deploy these harpoons. It's also a signal that would take very long to transmit uh, to this lander because every signal traveled 